This is a case of keratoconus with a history of previous eye drops as documented earlier by another surgeon. You can clearly see the central scarring. Because of this, I have planned a manual dalk and I will not attempt a big bubble technique here. Right now, I am marking the center of the cornea. I am using an 8mm manual trifine for trifination. At this step, my goal is to reach the depth of around 250 to 300 microns. This depth is important because it keeps the dissection safe, helps me to stay in the right plane and lowers the risk of perforation. You can also use a guided vacuum trifine for this step which provides more uniform depth and precision. Here I am using a crescent knife to start the initial dissection. The technique is to gently lift the tissue, apply slight upward traction and carefully separate the stromal strands. At this stage, it is very important to be slow and controlled. The aim is only to separate the entire stromal layers without going too deep and try to avoid perforation. You can see that I am deliberately avoiding dissection in the area of the previous head drops in the center. Instead, I am working around it first. The central scarred area will be left for the end as it is more adherent and requires extra caution during separation. I am now cutting the edges of the separated area while leaving the central part untouched. Clearing the peripheral area first creates more working space and makes the subsequent central dissection safer and easier to handle. Now I am starting the second round of dissection, this time going deeper into the stroma. The idea is to carefully enter the right plane and then extend the dissection in a full 360 degree manner. By separating all around in this uniform plane, we create a clear and safe working bed for the deeper layers. So you can see, once the correct plane is identified, I insert a close scissor into that plane and then gently open them. This creates a separation movement rather than an actual cutting action. It's important to avoid very sharp scissors here. Instead, use blunt-ended scissors to reduce the risk of inadvertent perforation. You can see me going circumferentially, maintaining the same depth and rhythm of dissection. Here, I have lost the plane. So, I am injecting a small amount of air to help separate the stromal lamellae. This air injection creates a clearer cleavage plane. Once that's established, I use blunt dissectors to carefully restart the dissection in correct layer. After creating a new plane, I am now restarting the dissection in the opposite direction. Working from both the sides like this helps in gradually meeting the planes and ensures a smoother, more controlled separation. And now we begin the third round of dissection. The same maneuvers are repeated but with extra caution because now we are getting close to Dua's layer. At this depth, Patience is vital. Keep the movements gentle, stay focused and avoid any sudden traction to prevent accidental perforation. This part often takes time, so the important thing is not to rush. Steady, gentle dissection gives the best outcome. You can notice the resistance is less now. This is where gentle spreading is safer than aggressive cutting. At this stage, I have almost reached Dua's layer. One important point to note is that I have still not attempted to separate the central area. The central scar zone is usually the most adherent, so it is best left for the final step once the peripheral dissection is complete. Here we have reached the final plane. You can see the clear shining Desmet's membrane. Interestingly, although the patient had a history of head drops, there is no Desmet's tear visible. The central area which we had left till the end has now separated quite easily. I am now cleaning the few remaining stromal strands and you can see how beautifully clear the desmet membrane looks at this stage. I am now preparing the edges properly which is an important step to ensure that suturing becomes easier and the graft sits evenly without any tension. Here is our donor graft from which the desmet membrane has been removed. 
The suturing technique here is almost the same as in penetrating keratoplasty. The key difference in DALK is that you have to be extra careful about tightening the sutures uniformly because uneven tension can easily induce high astigmatism. Just like in PK, the first four sutures are the most critical. They determine how evenly the graft sits on the recipient bed. Any imbalance here can lead to tilt or unequal distribution which becomes difficult to correct later. After these initial 8 sutures, you can notice how well the graft is sitting. And with this, the suturing is complete. The graft is now well secured, sitting evenly on the recipient bed and the tension is uniformly balanced across all sutures.